Welcome to the Rutland Town Planning Commission meeting for June 4th of 2020. I'm going to start tonight by taking attendance just to um, make sure we've got everyone. Um, I haven't seen or heard from Howard yet. Um, Norm is there. Jim is on the phone. Sherman is there. Yep. Andy's there. No Dana yet, Mary Beth, Foley, and myself. And Andy. Andy McCain is here. Did you say Andy? Barb? No, I thought so, but yes, Andy's there. So trying to pull up the uh, agenda here. Uh, any member from the public on the line? Nope. Mary Beth is here, though. I missed that joke. <laughs> no, um, she said me. Am I, am I cutting in and out? No, you're fine. Okay. No. no. I thought you had missed Mary Beth when you did the roll call, but maybe I, just me. OK, so I guess. Um, the first item on the agenda is the Railway Museum again, but it looks like we still don't have any representatives. No, I left, I left messages for, um, for Matt Rockwell and, and he never, never even got back to me, so. Okay. I don't know what that means. Hopefully we can get them in at some point. Oh, here comes Dana. Hi, Dana. <coughs> Hello. <coughs> hey, Dana. Okay. We're just starting, Dana. Okay. So um, we're going to skip over, excuse me, the Railroad Museum item um, because there are no representatives from the railroad here, unless someone has something that you want to add to that, that as some continuation or some follow up to last week? I don't think so, I don't have anything. Okay, okay. Um, so the next item is the stormwater ordinance map. And I have let um, Andres Ter Teresa know that we do want some sort of tutorial. And he's not expecting payment right away. He, he can wait on that, so. We're cool there. Um, so hopefully you folks had a chance to use the map. And yep. if you have, since we have so much tonight on the agenda, if you have some suggestions, could you email those to me and I'll compile them? Is that, is that okay with everyone? Dana, yes. You okay with that, Dana? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. In fact, Norman and I spent, I don't know, an hour or so um, uh, going through some of the things together that we had from the last meeting and happy to type those up and do screenshots if you need to uh, see what we were experiencing. So. Yeah. Okay, that'd be great. That'd be great. So I think Andres is probably going to hold off until like early July. Anyway, I'll try to get them done in the next week or so. Okay. <coughs> Great. Okay, so we'll move on to the Act 250 application for a new business for Rutland Town. It's a uh, Harbor Freight Tools. And the select board asked us to take a look at that application. Um, particularly for, for the natural resources parts of that. And uh, Bill, do you have anything else to add to that before we dive in? No, it was, <clears throat> there wasn't much to it. I mean, it, you know, the, it does bring up some, some stormwater possibilities in that area is that's, that's where a treatment area was planned uh, down in the back there. Uh, 
Joe Denardo had said, you know, maybe if they're looking to raise that site, you know, need to bring in Phil, that would be a good opportunity to bring Phil from where we need to get it out of. Cause I was, I guess a big part of the construction costs was removing it. Uh, but Byron and I looked over the plans and the site is being, is pretty much level. It's not going to really change in elevation. So uh, I'm not sure if there's going to be any, if they're going to be able to help us with any part of that, but I think Andre's going to reach out to them, but I haven't heard anything from him at all about, about how that went. So there might still be some stormwater practice there in that area. There definitely, as part of their plans, there definitely is. There's a, there's a retention pond and I mean, there, there, there's some vegetation they're planting and they're going to make it a, a like, a, uh, so it's going to have like bushes and things in that there. It's not going to be very deep, but it will, it will be there. It's going to be off the West end of their parking lot. Okay. And this is a retail place. Yeah. It's Harbor Freight Tools. Yep. Okay. Um, do you mind calling up the ANR Atlas and showing us exactly uh, what we're, where we're looking at? Yep. Give me just one second here and I'll, so, Barbara, while he's doing that, um, <clears throat> the agenda item says um, Planning Commission comments on the Act 250 application. Uh, yeah, we'll look at the, they filled it all out. So okay. we'll check their check their answers. Okay. We, have we seen that? I don't remember seeing that. But Yeah, I, I sent it out last Friday. Uh, some people had um, some problems. Oh, uh, that's what Mary Beth was referencing. Yep. Yeah. Okay. But we'll, we'll, we'll put it up too. Yeah, I'll see if I can go back to Mary Beth. She sent it out today. So I didn't get a chance to look at that. There you go. So there's all these on the right hand side. Yep, this is all these over here. Uh, and they're gonna extend off this road. Uh, and up, up the, the, the municipal border is, is like right along that line right there. They're, it's, they're gonna be just over, Rutland City's gonna, they're gonna be in there, in Rutland City by a little bit. Their parking lot's gonna be in there. Uh, but that's, that's about it. Most of the building's gonna be in the town. But yeah, it's all gonna be right in this area. <laughs> They're going to extend the road that goes into all these. Yes. Like yeah. So there's a there is a um, the town's been discussing for a while a service road, which would have run west and then turned and gone south and come out basically like right through that tree line right there. Yeah. So they actually and I shared with them those plans and they actually adjusted their entrance to allow that to happen in the future if it ever does uh so that was that was helpful but yeah it's going to be in this in this spot um right right adjacent to the big lot to the uh, ocean state job lot parking lot wait a minute um this is norman um is it's hard to point point to all these again please it's the big white there. glaring thing all these is the big Right, and so they'll come through all these parking lot, but nope, nope. This is a this is a separate road. This is an actual road. This is all these parking lot, right here. I thought the review sheet I have, and I did not somehow I did not download the application. I'm sorry, I I missed that email, Barbara. That's okay. Um, we'll just, we'll go through it, item by item. All right, so I'll wait for my questions. I, I just don't know where is it going to be built specifically. Right here. With, right where I can't see. Okay. Right in the middle of the screen. I can't, I can't draw on the screen. I can't draw on this. It looks like a, a lawn there. Norman. To the west of Aldi's. Yeah. Norman. West Follow of that road. And where the road ends, that's where the um, property, I think, will begin in that field there before the tree line. Is that about right, Bill? Yeah, it's gonna be, no, it's not gonna work. Um, Sandwich yeah. between all these and Ocean Straight um, job lots. Yeah. Hey, Bill, if you go to the ANR Atlas, it'll show the, the parcels. And then we can call up the layers that we'll need.
Um, that's not it. I do that. You can just Google Vermont A and R Atlas. Yeah, it's it, 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 it has the same filters here on the side. Oh, I don't know these. What what layer were you looking for? Oh, uh, we're looking for quite a few of them. We're looking for floodways. Uh, we're looking for wetlands. We're looking for endangered species. So I'm not sure they're going to be on this one. Uh, no, A and R Atlas. And then the the second one, the five version. And then in quick tools, you can go right to, um, or you can just put Rutland in there. It, Rutland Town goes by just Rutland. Uh, go back, go back to Quick Tools, Zoom to Town. Uh, yep. It's fighting with me. Yeah, it is. Um, Can you get rid of the the um, the search things? Just get out of that. Yeah, we're getting closer. <laughs> so it's that long thin parcel, isn't it? Yeah, they're they're buying a portion of it. It's actually, yeah, it's, it's. So it's a couple it's, of both. The, the white line is the municipal boundary and okay. they are buying, uh, I wish I had a, I don't have a, I don't, I don't have a digital version of what, they're, what they're doing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's right where it is. Okay. So back out of that box, and then um, over on the right-hand side, there's like map tools or something called like that? Yeah. Okay, and then um, map data, and then show layers. And this, these are the different natural resource categories, or at least those questions. Hey, Mary Beth, do you, do you have the application in front of you? Um, yes, I do. Let's see. I don't, actually. One minute. Okay. Do you have it in front of you, Bill? <laughs> Let's see if I got it. Yeah. Uh, I do have it. Yep, I got it right here. So I, I think we can probably skip down to probably, um, I think it's page seven. Criterion number one, unless anyone noticed anything in all of that initial information they put in. Was there anything there? No, I looked through. Okay. I mean, they should know that stuff. Who owns them and all that. Um, so criterion one is air pollution. 
demonstrate that the project will not cause undue air pollution. Uh, and they say they're going to use electric heat, retail store, and will not result in emissions, noxious odors, or sources of noise. Will there be blasting? No. And what restrictions for hours of construction? Uh, they'll follow all noise ordinances. Which there, there are none, so. Okay. <laughs> And does your project require an A&R air pollution control permit? And they say no. I, I don't, anyone know anything about that? Those permits? No. So, so are you reading from a document that uh, you sent us? Yeah, it's, the, it's called the Act 250 application form. And then I guess it was re revised on May 19th. Rev 051920. I have a few forms. I don't think I have that one for some reason. And that's the one that I emailed to everyone at like six o'clock because I couldn't open mine, so I looked it up. Still have a new email, but you don't have a computer, right? So it doesn't really help you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we can go through these criteria and then we can um, look at the categories in the map that Bill has up here. Uh, air pollution is not one of the categories. Um, so the next one is headwaters. Is your project in a headwaters area? And I think it's pretty clear it's not. So I think that quite, that answer is okay. One uh, B is waste disposal. Will the project use a waste a wastewater disposal system? No. And then there's a whole series of questions about permits and amendments. Mary Beth, or anyone have anything to add to those? Um. No. Okay. Um, the acreage of the project site is plus or minus 2.4 acres. Uh, that covered by buildings and parking areas will be 1.42 acres. Uh, how will stormwater from the project be treated and disposed? Stormwater to be treated by a four bay and bioretention basin and Barbara? discharge into existing drainage on site. Yeah? What page are you on? Uh, I think it's eight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, eight. I had looked this over previously. I'd forgotten about it since it was last week. Uh, so page eight? Yeah. And we're still on a, a 1B. Okay. Um, Waste disposal. Yep, I'm with you. Okay. Any manufacturing or industrial processes that affect wastewater, and they say no, it's a retail store. Um, they say no to a permit, a Vermont Hazardous Waste Handler Site ID form. Um, hazardous materials used or stored on site, they say no. Mm -hmm. Indicate how construction debris, including stumps, will be disposed. Um, it'll be disposed by a third party dumpster removal company. Um, the contractor will be responsible for following the Agency of Natural Resources Waste Reduction Plan for waste reuse and recycling throughout construction. And if it's more than 5,000 square feet, I can't remember. Is it more than 5,000, Bill? Do you remember? I don't think that it is. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was, well, I don't know, 15,000 square feet. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, 15,000 square feet, it says. So it says any floor drains and uh, they indicate proposed to be installed on that. 
Okay, 1C water conservation, um, typical plumbing for two restrooms, portable water and fire sprinkler system, domestic usage of 625 gallons per day is anticipated. Um, water conservation measures, um, the project will use low flow plumbing. And will any water be used for commercial or industrial manufacturing or processing? No. Will any water be withdrawn from rivers, streams, or other bodies of water? No. Are any permits or approvals for water withdrawal required by the a by A and R? And they say no. Sound about right, to everyone? Yep. Yeah. Okay. One D is floodways. Now we can call up the map. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> so over um, go up a little go up the list, Bill, and I it should be under um I think it's under rivers. Mm -hmm. And then the flood hazard areas, yep. Nope. There's some, there's some farther away, but that's not in, not in any of that. Um, and then the defirm panels, or defirm, you can click both of those just to double check. Anything else pops up? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and then I think the first question is, are they within 100 feet of a stream or river? Uh, Mussy Brook is, is further, farther north, right, Bill? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's not in any... Okay, um, so I lost my application. Uh, what's the next question? Which one were you on? Were you on one E? Um, we're on one D. Flood rates. What one were you on, Barbara? One D. Okay, I thought we went past that. Number B. D, as in David. Right, but yeah, part part we're criterion part one B. D, but we're on subletter B, correct? Oh yes, right. Is any portion of the project located in the special flood hazard area? Thanks, Andy. And, and they said no, right? No. Mm -hmm. Next is is any portion of the project located in a river corridor? And they've answered no. <clears throat> and there's another um, below the flood hazard. And the floodways, there's a river corridor thing there. You can just hit that. Yeah, such so seat is answered no. Yep. Okay. Nope, nothing comes up. Yep. What's next, Andy? Criterion 1E, subletter A. Is the project located near a stream or water course? And they've answered no. Yeah. Okay. So B is describe any construction that will disturb the stream, the stream bed or the adjacent 50 foot buzzed buffer as measured from the tops of the stream banks. And they have answered in the box no stream beds will be disturbed by construction. Okay. You're on a roll, Andy. Okay, I'll keep going then. Sub C, does the project involve dam construction or withdrawal or impoundment of water from a river, stream, or pond? And they've answered no. And I don't think the bioretention would be applicable there. The mm -hmm. stormwater. Okay. Okay, keep going, Andy. Criterion 1F, shorelines. Sub A, does the project involve development or subdivision on or near a river, a river, lake, pond, or reservoir shoreline? And they've answered no. 
Okay. And I don't believe then they have to answer anything else in 1F. Okay. So then we go to 1G, Criterion 1G Wetlands. And I think that's under Rivers, Bill. You can close some of these as we, like, oh, well, we were in Rivers. Yeah. Um, we're looking for wetlands. Um, try storm water. Oh, that would be in your watershed. Watershed, thanks. Management, yep. Yeah. So it's above rivers. Yeah. Um, oh, that's waste. Uh, right above that. Yeah, one more up. Yeah. yeah. And it's not wetlands projects. Go down so it's the VSWI, right? Yeah. Is that, that what you use? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the advisory layer mm -hmm. just below it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we've got something in yeah, on that western edge. But that's outside the scope of their project. Okay. Are they, they're buying those parcels? They're buying portions of the parcels. Oh. Okay. <laughs> they're not buying the whole parcels. They're just buying the section they need. Um, okay. Okay. And Andy, the questions are? Uh, Criterion 1G wetlands, sub A. Does the track contain class one or class two wetlands or wetland buffers? And they've answered yes. And then under sub B is an individual wetland permit, IWP or general wetland permit, GWP needed from the ANR Watershed Management Division required for work in the wetland or wetland buffer. And they've also answered yes. Mm. Okay. So I, um, when I looked up the project in the state, database they had all the site plans in there and there's a wetland impact site plan that showed um, where the wetlands are and the work that would be done um, is this map correct the map on there so the ANR Atlas just shows kind of the the wide view but they must have had a consultant do a delineation because they had additional wetlands where the work was planned. Um, here, I could mm, let's see. Uh, let me. I could email. Well, there's so there's like twenty different documents. I don't know what to, what level. Well, you know, like there's ten different site plans and. Um, yeah. So I could email it out. I don't know what, you know, to what level you want to look well, at it. It looks like, <laughs> it looks like they're doing their due diligence here and saying yes. Yeah. So I, I don't think we would want, want to negate that. We want to encourage that. So. Yeah. And they would need to provide the wetland permit before they got the Act 250 permit from the state. So, you know, I don't, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Andy, there's, um, so we, we did, they We're say they're on. class one or two and they need a permit. And that's that criteria, right? Criterion. So now we're to criterion two and three water supply. Mm -hmm. demonstrate the project has sufficient water available for its needs and that the project will not cause an unreasonable burden on an existing water supply. Um, they're showing public water supply and they're showing that under sub B is a wastewater system uh, from the A&R drinking and groundwater protection vision required and they're saying yes. Okay. And sub C approval from ANR drinking water groundwater protection necessary and they're saying no 
and I guess the 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 real thing is under sub subpart D, municipal water services provided currently to adjacent lots, continued water service to the new Harbor Freight retail store is not expected to create any negative impacts. Okay. Does that sound right to everyone? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay, on to four. Arterian four, soil erosion. Um, subpart A, describe the terrain, and they've answered, earthwork is proposed to occur in a currently undeveloped three plus or minus acre area. Existing grades from two to 5% prior to construction, the existing and that ends. <laughs> <laughs> so to part B, are you required to obtain the following permits, construction general permit or a permit amendment? Yes. Individual permit or permit amendment, no. Um, do you want me to keep on going? Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, subpart C, describe erosion control measures to be taken during construction. Implementation of erosion control will be the responsibility of the site contractor. Erosion control measures shall include non mineral silt fence, riprap, and they're referencing a sediment control plan. And subpart D, describe permanent erosion control take, uh, measures. And its answer is parking lot be paved and parking lot aisles be curbed and landscaped following construction, grass in all open areas established as well. And the last is subpart E, how frequently will the erosion calls be inspected during construction and who will be accountable for their maintenance? And the answer is site contractor will be responsible for the inspection and maintenance of erosion controls contractors are responsible for compliance with the construction general permit. So the contractor does the maintenance. Compliance with the construction general permit. So yes, we will be accountable for their maintenance and, and the, it's the contractor. Okay. Numero five. Transportation. And subpart A, describe access to state or local highway from the project. Uh, their answer, access to the project site is through an existing driveway on Route 7. Um, is that considered a driveway, Bill? It is not a town road. Okay. So it's, not a, it's a private road at this point. Should it say private road as opposed to driveway? I, I don't know if, I, I don't know. I mean, it's not really anything at this point it's, it is kind of a I mean, it kind of is a driveway it's just it's just the access at this point so i don't yeah. know how they how they determine how they define it either way right okay andy okay b has the town or state approved the project access for state on um, pardon me and they've answered yes We'll take their word for it. Okay. Um, <laughs> and if it subpart C, um, if a new roadway is involved, well, so C is not applicable. Um, D, explain how emergency vehicles and trucks have sufficient access into the project site and easily turn around. C, construction drawings, but turn around for truck trailer can also be used for emergency vehicles. Yeah, there's the plenty of room. Okay. Subpart E, how many trips per day will the project generate? Uh, they're saying 143 total one-way trips, 17 a.m. peak and 18 p.m. peak hour trips. How in the world do they determine that? Uh, I have to say from my experience as a very frequent Harbor Freight customer, that, that is pie in the sky malarkey. <laughs> 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 there is a Harbor Freight near where I live in Florida, and it is immense. It is extremely popular. I'd say anytime I go there, there's 15, 10 to 15 cars in the parking lot. So they're downplaying the numbers, you're saying, Nathan? I, I, well, you know, who knows here? This is, this is Rutland and not, um, not the area where I am down there where the population is. Um, yeah. 
far, far larger. And this could be, um, I really don't know how big that store is down there, but I think it's one of their larger ones. Mm -hmm. These are up in Berlin. The little retail store is going right now. What's that, Jim? It, yeah, the, the store up in Burlington uh, recently opened within the last couple of years. And I've been in there, uh, oh, I don't know, probably half a dozen times. And I would say the 15 to 20 cars would be about right for that place. So um, there are times uh, when there's more than that, and there's times when there's less. But averagely, I would say 15 to 20 on what I've seen. Hmm. Okay. Okay, Andy. Um, okay, subpart F. Explain how the traffic associated will not create unreasonable congestion. And their answer is the traffic associated will not create unreasonable, obviously, unsafe at the proposed peak hour trips of 17 during the a.m. and 18 during the p.m. Um, to a 14% increase in peak hour volumes entering in the intersection of Coal River Road and does not meet the Vermont Trans threshold of 75 trips during the peak hour to initiate a traffic impact study. Okay. Uh, subpart G, describe any transportation demand management strategies. And their answer is none. Uh, subpart H, explain how pedestrian and bicycle center will be provided. And they say it will be maintained along US 7 and access to the site with existing pedestrian and bicycle accommodations at this intersection, which include existing pedestrian signals. Not necessarily safety, but. The safety will be maintained is what okay. they're. Subpart I, explain how proposed project will not cause unreasonable delays or unsafe conditions for drivers for, pardon me, unsafe conditions for users of existing pedestrian, bicycle, and public transportation. The proposed project uses an existing entrance or will not change the conditions for users of existing pedestrian, bicycle, and or public transportation facilities. It sounds, uh, okay. it sounds like they're interpreting both of those questions to be the same. Yes. Their answer was the question. Jay, is parking required for the project? Yes. Uh, explain how the project will provide safe access and connections to adjacent lands and facilities into existing and planned pedestrian, bicycle, and transit network survey services. Proposed parking lot is to extend off the adjacent drive currently occupied by Aldi. Proposed lot has an access point equal to the width of the existing drive and makes a gradual transition to 30 feet wide to ensure safe ingress and egress. I, explain how the measures outlined in K and G above are appropriate, given the type, scale, and transportation impacts of the project. Their answer is, TDM measures are not required due to the amount of additional peak hour trips. Proposed site will provide an extension to the existing access on US 7 for vehicular access. It is not typical for pedestrians to access store of this nature, giving the product sold and sidewalk connections are not provided. Any comments on that one? No sidewalks, no accommodations for pedestrians. I mean, it's true, people usually it's kind of sure. So, so, walk so there are no accommodations for employees to walk. Apparently so not. There. I mean, is that? Do we want to? Do we want to add to, or make a suggestion that they're they look at that uh, for employees and possibly uh, customers? Yes, well, certainly employees could be using public transportation of some sort and have to walk a short distance to get there. <clears throat> so the question I think that they're answering is that there's no sidewalk there now where Aldi's is located. So 
I think by extension, they're reasoning that they don't have to put one in either. And I would question that. So then the question would be, why isn't there a sidewalk by Aldi's? Well, that's not where I agree that is a question, but I don't think it's a question here for this. <clears throat> but isn't there, a side, there, isn't there a sidewalk on Route 7 to down to Aldi's and, and then through the parking lot? I think. Well, yes, I don't there's, there's a sidewalk, sidewalk there. down the road. Mm -hmm. But maybe I'm wrong. I, I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah, there's the sidewalk and there's the crosswalk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a curb. No, there's there's no sidewalk down the road. Oh, I, I'm talking about along, Route 7. Along Route 7, there's a sidewalk. There is nothing down that, that driveway. That driveway. So they're saying right. that if, they, if they're extending the Aldi access road, why would they have to put a sidewalk in since there's no sidewalk there? There's a grassy knoll area off the uh, road. I think you know one one way to look at it, Dana, is that there's more traffic and there's more people now, or there will be with the retail store. Hey, uh, this is this is Norman. Um, it, if I'm reading Sherman's comments correctly, uh, his sense is that by adding this um, store, uh, this facility. Uh, to the area, um, there's an increased likelihood that people might either walk or bike uh, to this place, particularly employees. So if you add the two together, it, it makes it a bigger question. Is that what you're saying, Sean? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that this or all these individually, but it's the combination of uh, raises the concern. <clears throat> and I agree that the fact that there's no sidewalk, that Aldi doesn't have a sidewalk, is a good question. I just don't know where it fits in, in this process. The thing is, Aldi, anybody can access Aldi's from Route 7 and walk right across the parking lot. A pedestrian to access Harbor Freight will have to walk either down that road or traverse Aldi's parking lot. Good, good point, Andy, yeah. Neither of which I see as a problem myself, but. Well, you, you, I think you, you need to take a look at the type of merchandise that Harbor Freight sells. Most of their inventory is heavy-duty industrial stuff, like uh, things that you would use in a repair shop, like jacks and lifts, and, and um, very few things that uh, they sell that would uh, a customer would uh, carry out of there in a paper bag. Um, it's, it's big stuff. It's uh, compressors toolboxes, industrial types, um, motors. You know, there's a few things thrown in in the mix, like tarps and wrenches and that kind of thing. But uh, for the most part, they, they make their living on uh, the big stuff. Well, I don't think the question is that as much for... Um, customers as it is for employees. Does it indicate anywhere how many employees they'll have? It did, yeah, in the beginning, let's see. I didn't see that. It may have been on the project review sheet. Let's see. <laughs> I didn't see number of employees. I don't think it's on the application. I don't think it's oh. Well, you, you know, the other thing, in looking at the map, uh, we're looking at, we can see where Aldi's is and where the Aldi's parking lot is. We don't know exactly where the new parking lot's going to be. I mean, we know the general vicinity, but is it going to be 30 feet behind, away from Aldi's, or 5 feet? 
from the Aldi's parking lot. Uh, so we talked before about an employee being able to walk across the grass to get to <clears throat> Aldi's from Route 7. And I, and I guess we could extend that to say uh, and someone could walk across, walk from the end of the Aldi's parking lot to the new parking lot across the grass. And I assume there's going to be finish there, not a, you know, it's not going to be left like it is. There was some indication of, um, of grass being in the parking area where there was not asphalt. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So, so on uh, page 15, it talks about um, 25 to 30 part and full-time employees. Probably not at any one time, but probably a total, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so how about if we just ask if there are going to be any accommodations for pedestrian or bike traffic? Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Andy, yeah. if you want to... All, all their other parking lots that I've been in are very easy to walk through. Um, and so you can walk from one end of the parking lot when you park to get to the place safely. So I wouldn't think anybody would have a problem if they can, as long as they can get from Aldi's parking lot, there wouldn't be a problem at all. They leave a lot of space between the, the um, where a car heads in and the building. Okay. Okay. Um, if you want, uh, Andy, if you want to give your voice a break, I could take over reading the application. So, okay. If you'd like That's to. The next sure. section. Barbara, sure. I, guys, I, Barbara, I sent to you also the, um, there was a, another email they got from uh, Bill Burke um, about, about comments on their application. Did you, did you see that one? I thought we forwarded that out as well. The project review sheet? No, no, it was, yeah. it was some comments and, and uh, there was a, a, a large note they had uh, on uh, Criterion 5 and they said, so I, I, if, you might, if you guys don't have it, I can, I can read it to you. So um, a couple of the comments, but nothing that's really relevant to what we're, we're talking about in terms of earlier stuff. Uh, but so what it says is your traffic analysis under criterion five is insufficient. We need to know what the combined all these and Harbor freight hour trips are projected to be. If that combined number reaches 75, as you have pointed out, a formal traffic study of the impacts upon the intersection of cold river road and South Main street will require study along with any other details required by VTRANS protocols for a formal traffic study, confer with VTRANS. Moreover, we note that the permit issued for all these contains the following condition. Here we go. Follow-up traffic studies. The permittee shall perform follow-up traffic monitoring studies to determine whether or not undue congestion as determined by the VTRANS and district commission has occurred at the intersections enumerated in the permittees traffic study. The traffic monitoring studies shall be conducted six months to 12 months after the Aldi's is opened for business and that follow-up report shall be submitted to the district commission and to VTRANS no later than 13 months after the store is opened for business. The follow-up study and required report shall be repeated five years following the date of the first follow-up study and submitted to the commission and to VTRANS. The follow-up study shall include turning movement counts at the intersection included in exhibit 15 and analysis of the results for right turn lane reference, line of sight, delay and queue lengths. The follow-up reports shall provide accident data during the same time interval as outlined above to ascertain if highway safety in the study area is negatively impact. If as a result of the above studies, VTRANS identifies congestions or safety problems, then VTRANS will notify the district commission and the commission will determine whether or not mitigation measures to ameliorate, wow, I can't say that word, ameliorate the adverse conditions are indicated. In the event the further mitigation measures are indicated, the permittee shall work with VTRANS in an effort to reach an agreement as to what those measures might be. The permittee shall report to the commission within 60 days of completion of the reports required above, 
whether or not it has an agreement with VTrans as to further mitigation measures, if any. If an agreement cannot be reached, the Active 50 District Commission will determine whether or not hearing or other measures are required. Um, so uh, what says, under Criterion 5, pre present a more detailed analysis in Schedule B, or if the combined count hits 75, then the requirement will be for the applicant to perform and submit a formal traffic study in the format approved by VTRANS. Please provide copies of the reports required to date under, under the permit for all these. The reports should be available from all these or VTRANS if they were submitted. I don't currently have access to the permit file. The application will remain complete pending receipt of the study if required. So they're treating um, that as a, um, they said for record keeping purposes, they're treating it as uh, an amendment to all these permit because they're the ones that have they're the ones that control the the road at, the, at this point. Oh, okay. So the traffic thing is is not settled with them. Right, mm -hmm. but I didn't I didn't hear anything in there about the pedestrian or bike access. No, but that would be part of the traffic study, though. I mean, if they have pedestrian traffic, but they're not going to know that until the building's open. I think if they, you know, if they did the traffic study and said, hey, we got, you know, 20 people a day walking back and forth, they, they may say you need to go back and put it in. But um, Do we know the results of the traffic study that uh, Aldi's was compelled to? Um, it to doesn't do? say they, it doesn't say they were compelled to do it. So they, they, well, I, I, that's all I have. They didn't attach anything else to it. There wasn't anything else. They included that note with this reply but there was nothing else that was there. Who's this? The applicants for the um, for the project? This that that what I just read that came from Bill Burke. From the Environmental Commission, Dana. Oh, okay. Yeah. It didn't come from the applicants for the two. No, that that came from Bill Burke. That was that was a reply to their. This is this is an initial reply to their application. So I think going back to Barbara's question, I I think that um, they need the applicants need to get more information about what the current traffic patterns are and then combine their 17 or 18 increased to, um, to answer the question about whether a traffic study is needed. Yeah. Because if, if they're, if they're, if all these is seeing traffic on that road of, we'll say 50 to 60, they could be over. Yeah. Pretty quick. Pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So um, I, I don't know that, I don't think that that's a complete answer. And I think that um, our comment should be that in reviewing the Act 250 permit, there's more um, information that needs to be provided, particularly either that the number of Aldi's is well below say 30 or 40, which would make it their, their assumption uh, still below the 75, but they have not taken into consideration the joint uh, some total of uh, cars coming down that road. Mm -hmm. Is it, isn't that basically what Bill Burke's saying, Mel? And, and that what, what Bill Sweet mm -hmm. just re just read to us. And can we just reference that and say say that they have to adhere to to, to yeah. that? Well, was that that was to all these? That wasn't to the new applicant, was it? No, no. The first part of it I thought was for this application. Maybe I'm the first part of it was yeah. So they they detail they copied the condition from the all these permit into their reply. So they said, we know that the permit issued for all these contains the following condition. That was that long thing. Right. right. So, yeah. But that was not a response, a direct response mm -hmm. no. to uh, this criteria. No. The so I think we, we need to, if we're providing um, notes to the select board, correct, Barbara? Is that what we're doing? Yes. Yeah. So our note needs to be, that the select board needs to to um, communicate to the applicant that their answer is insufficient based on the uh, reply from VTrans. And that so Bill, is, could, could, I'm sorry, Barbara. Go Bill, ahead. The, go ahead, Barbara. Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, Bill, could you just read the first part of what you read? Because I thought the first part referred specifically to this application. 
So it does, yeah. So it says your traffic analysis under Criterion 5 is insufficient. Okay, then that's that's for this. Yes, this is this is a this is from them. This is from the state to Harbor Freight. Right. So okay. Your your traffic analysis is insufficient. We need to know what the combined Aldi's and Harbor Freight peak hour trips are projected to be. If that combined number reaches seventy five. As you have pointed out, a formal traffic study of the impacts upon the intersection of Cold River Road and South Main Street will require study, along with any other details required by the VTRANS protocols for a formal traffic study. Please confer with VTRANS. Yeah, and all I'm saying is that, that our recommendation is that they adhere to that, and then we need to review it after that. I don't know if we would need to recommend it if they're if the state's telling them they got to do it. I don't know. If, uh, you, I think we need to simply point it out to the um, select board that that is an area that was insufficiently that was yeah. um, determined to be insufficient by VTrans. Okay. Okay. I think we got this covered. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Thank All you, right. everybody. So, um, who, uh, Mary Beth, are you taking it from here? Sure. Yeah. Um, so criterion six, educational services, um, A, estimate the number of additional students who may attend local schools as a result of the project. Um, zero students will attend the local schools as the project is commercial in nature. Um, B, provide evidence that hey, areas- Hang on, Mary Beth. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How do they know that they're not going to have people move into the area with kids that are their employees? Um, yeah. I, I, I think this question is about that area specifically. I see. Okay. So yeah, there's no not, school not, nearby, which is what they're trying to say. Right. I think it's meant for like a subdivision. Okay. You know, the, 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 the answer just didn't, the response didn't answer that question. Well, Criterion know. 6 says demonstration me. project will not cause an unreasonable burden on the ability of local governments to provide educational services. So I think that's kind of what Dana, I think Dana, that's your point. Yep. I, I, I mean, if they're saying it's what, 20, 20 to 30 employees, I mean. Yeah, but, but they won't be, they won't be living there. Right. That's their answer. Barbara, and, and just work there. Barbara, and there will not be an increase in the number of students as, as a result of this probably. Given yeah. this way. I don't know how they know that. If you were creating 30 jobs, I mean, take, take, take the general population as a whole. And if you <laughs> say, say uh, the, the population has a whole of 15% uh, of the population has uh, children of, of, of school age. So 15% of their employees and say they have 30 employees, that's 4.5. So you've got five families that might have children. That's some kind of an impact. How they know the number zero is what I'm basically as Bill said, I, I don't know that that's a logical response to that. There was no, there was no note in the initial reply about about that answer. And and I would think that there is no expectation that that this project is going to increase the the population of of the city or the town of Rutland. And if so, it's going to be really everybody. significant. Andy, what? We have a rather high unemployment right now, so therefore that's we right. can somewhat assume that the people that are going to work on Harbor Freight already live here, and therefore their children are already in school. So I think the answer is appropriate, and let's move on. Okay. Thank you, Andy. <laughs> All right. So B, provide evidence that area schools will be able to accommodate additional students. And then it says the project is not expected to affect existing schools. Criterion 7, municipal services. Um, demonstrate the project won't cause an unreasonable burden on the ability of local government to provide municipal or government services. And then there, uh, A, check the municipal services that will be utilized. And they say it'll affect police, water supply, fire protection, sewage disposal, ambulance, but that it won't affect solid waste disposal or road maintenance. And then there B is provide a comment letter from any non-municipal entity and a completed uh, municipal impact questionnaire, which the select board would do, right? We mentioned that earlier. 
Yeah, they're doing that's going to be for, uh, finalized Tuesday. Okay. Um, so then criteria eight, scenic beauty, historic sites, and natural areas. Um, A, describe the tract, uh, surrounding area, and any natural areas. Um, their answer, the project site is located in an industrial commercial zone along the Rutland City, Rutland Town line on the west side of Route 7. The tract area is currently unoccupied with lawn space and trees that will require clearing. There's an existing swale along the south edge of the lot that will remain after construction. Okay. And then B is the project use, size, architecture, and density consistent with the existing or planned land uses in the area. What's the building <laughs> style? What materials will be used? Elevation drawings. Um, this says the Harbor Freight retail store is a consistent size, use, and style with the surrounding existing lots. Um, Keep on going. Okay. Uh, excuse me, may I be heard here? Yep. Um, I seem to remember when we were going over our view shed materials, um, Alan Biederman, I think Alan, mentioned something about the roofs and um, it just somehow sticks in my mind. I may be wrong. Yes, but this, this is not a scenic resource area, Norm. Okay. That, that applied only to those areas, those 20, then 16 areas that we selected. Okay. Definitely not this area of town. <laughs> I just remember some pictures showing roofs. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, so C, will the project generate any significant noise during or after construction? How long will construction take place? Um, is noise an ongoing factor? Um, typical construction noise will occur during construction, but will comply with local noise ordinances. Construction is expected to take 9 to 12 months. D, describe the proposed architectural style and building materials and colors in relation to the style of area buildings. The proposed building will be 15,630 square feet, generally rectangular in shape. The store entrance will be on the northeast side of the building facing north. Directly above the entrance doors is a metal canopy and above a tower element which contains the hyper freight signage. The building is to be CMU with a split face finish on the north wall and smooth face on the other exterior walls. Whatever CMU is. Uh, it's something like corrugated metal something. Something. <laughs> wow. <Yeah. laughs> Very good. Um, I think. I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, identify site plans and they reference the drawing. Um, e, describe proposed signs including location and details on size, illumination, and colors. Um, ADA signs and ballers and in front of accessible parking stalls. Entry sign will be added to the existing Aldi sign. See building elevations for building signage. See cut sheets for size and specifications of building signs. Concrete masonry unit. Thank ah, you. okay, nice. A unit. <laughs> cool. Concrete. Um, nice. Uh, F, describe exterior lighting, including location, lamp wattage, fixture size, style, how will lights be controlled. Um, exterior lighting is shown on, shown on the lighting plan and is placed within the parking lot as well as building mounted wall path lighting. The photometrics have been shown to ensure the light does not spill over the property line. Should and, we suggest here, should we suggest that LED lighting be used? Oh, I'm sure they're going to use it. Okay. I mean, I haven't seen anybody build anything lately that hasn't had it, so. Okay. Well, it doesn't hurt to. They have a, I have a lighting plan. What does that say? Um, I don't think anyone would propose anything but LED lighting today. C8. Hold on, get there. C8. Good to hear. That's all planting. Uh, 
No, it's just you no know, C is their landscaping plan, not their lighting plan. Um, hmm. Oh, here we go. C nine. I see seven. They got that as the landscape plan, so they must have mixed them up. Um. Yeah, they're LED fixtures. Okay. There you go. Well, <laughs> okay. G, so, G, describe how utilities have been designed to minimize their visibility. Electrical, electric conduit has been designed to run underground to site lights and to the building. The proposed electric transformer and dumpster have been located to the rear of the project to minimize visibility. The dumpster is enclosed by a wood fence to screen. H, describe landscaping, how landscaping minimizes visual impacts. Existing vegetation will remain to every extent possible. The landscape is designed to provide shade within the parking lot, beautify the building in the front without screening it from the road, and provide screening to the property to the north. Plantings are also a part of the bioretention basin. Okay. I describe any recorded historic sites, including historic structures, attach a letter from the Division for Historic Preservation. Um, so they're saying no historic sites. J, is the project located on land that contains or is likely to contain prehistoric archeological site? No. Does the project area contain evidence of historic settlement, such as stone walls, foundations, or ruins? No. I don't think there is down there. Yeah. Um, L, are there any designated rare or irreplaceable natural or fragile areas on or near the project site? Um, and then contact A and R. They said no. Um, criterion A or 8A, wildlife and endangered species. A, we does the project, oh, sorry. We can check the A and R atlas for this one. Yeah. Um, does the project track? include necessary wildlife habitat or endangered species? They say no. B, describe any impa impact the project will have on identified necessary wildlife habitat or endangered species. Um, there are no documented rare, threatened, or endangered species, although a potential for northern long-eared bats. Prior to tree clearing, a survey will be required or time of year restrictions as noted on the plans. Is that okay as is, everyone? Did you want to check the um, corridor for wildlife or no? We can, we can do that. Bill, can you switch back over to uh, the ANR one? And then um, yeah, there's a fish and wildlife or something. Mm -hmm. Might want to close some of these up. Close up rivers. So forest parks, uh, fish and wildlife. There we go. And scroll down. The rare and threatened, endangered, and mm -hmm. significant natural communities, uncommon species, deer wintering. I doubt it. Yeah. Or drought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we're wrong. good. Yeah, no, they and they talk about northern long-eared bat because they're considered to be all across the state. So they, oh, every okay. project says northern long-eared bat and has to survey for it. And Yeah. Uh, so nothing popped up there. Nope. No. Nope. Not on okay. that property. So we'll go into criteria 9A, impact of growth, um, which A, only applies to residential projects and subdivisions, and then B, uh, provide an estimate of the tax revenues the project will generate and information on anticipated employment. The project, project is expected to generate the following tax revenues, corporate tax, unknown as this is a California-based retailer, Sales tax, $210,000. Property tax, City of Rutland, $39,20. Town of Rutland, $73,93. And twenty-five. What's that? What's that? How does that work if Rutland City just has a sliver of this? 
it's because of the cost per square foot in Rutland City and the cost per square foot in Rutland Town. Oh. There's a substantial difference. Wow. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 20, 25 to 30 part and full-time employees. Okay. Um, criteria 9B, primary agricultural soils. We could do um, A&R on this one, Bill. The Atlas. Yeah. And it's and under geology. Mm. Oh, uh, open, open up, up yeah. the Atlas layers again, yeah. And then, yeah. There it is. And then there's Prime Ag. Keep going. I mean, you can hit all of those soils if you want, but Prime Ag is what we're looking at. So it's it is prime, mm -hmm. shown as prime, but it's not very agricultural, though. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, a does your project involve potential earth dis earth disturbance? Yes. Has Act Two Fifty previously issued findings of fact regarding primary ag? No. Does the tract contain soils classified by NRCS as primary ag soils? They say no. I mean, it should be yes. It should be yes. Yes, that's just yes. So this is, error. This is nine B C. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, does the subdivision or development result in reduction of agricultural potential of the primary ag soils? It says yes. Will the development or subdivision <laughs> interfere with the continuation of agricultural forestry on? Adjoining land, no. Um, is the project located in a des designated downtown growth center, new town center? Uh, no. Does the landowner owner control other lands that are reasonably suited to the purpose um, that aren't primary ag? And it says not applicable. Um, and not applicable. Uh, yeah, so a couple of these answers. Um, they should change just because of the, because it is shown as uh, prime ag. Okay, so other than C, what other one do you think they should change? Um, well, I just say not applicable uh, for G and H. It is applicable. But it, w yeah, it would be, I mean, unless they talk to someone with the agency of, you know, unless they have other documentation that's not here, but. But it would be a yes or no, probably, not a no. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so criteria 9C, productive forest soils. Um, you can call up the atlas, but. That yeah. doesn't, um, they don't really have a good layer yeah. or productive, yeah. yeah. Um, so Sorry, has, the property, <laughs> has the property been logged or managed for commercial forestry in the past? No. Is it currently being managed for forestry? No. Is the property enrolled in use value appraisal? No. Um, does the project site contain productive forest soils? No. Is that true? Um. How about the west side of that parcel? Or we just take their word for it? Yeah, I would take their word for it. I mean, it's in a developed. Yeah. We, we don't know where the property line is going to be either, though. Right. Or the, the site lines. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, keep going, Mary Beth. Sorry. Okay, that's right. Um, criteria 9D and 9E, earth resources. Are there any mineral or, or earth resources on the site with a high potential for extraction? No, so then none of the other questions are applicable. Um, criteria 9F, energy conservation. Um, applicants are required to provide evidence that the project will comply with the building energy standards. And do you certify that the project will comply? Yes. Um, the, uh, you'll be required to submit a copy of the applicable RBES certificate to the public service department. Will you ensure that condition is met? Yes. Uh, C, 
see applicants for commercial projects are required to provide evidence that the planning and design of the subdivision or development reflect the principles of energy conservation, including reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, do you certify that the product project when constructed will meet these CBES stretch guidelines? Yes. Um, describe how your project meets the best available technology standard. Uh, the project uses an energy management system which notifies the owner if any equipment is over consuming any electricity. Um, mm -hmm. F, list the energy conservation measures incorporated into the project design that will reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, and then they list LED lights, low flow plumbing fixtures, standardized control over lighting and HVAC systems to prevent an individual person from overriding and using more energy. Oh, look at this next one coming up. I know, I see that. <laughs> <laughs> I do, building use such as bike and walking paths, rideshare programs, carpool, parking spaces, etc. none. The, what number is this one again? Um, this is 9F, Criteria mm. 9F, and it's item Nine. F. Number two. Not. Subsection two. Okay. <laughs> That's a little inconsistency, isn't it? Hmm? Honest, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and what renewable energy components or have been incorporated into the project? None. Um, have you contacted Efficiency Vermont? or other energy efficiency utility to learn about cost-effective methods to reduce energy con consumption, yes. And then no other additional measures are being incorporated. Uh, Criterion 9G, private utilities, um, none apply to the project. Uh, let's see. Oh, none. Um, controlled by one more than one owner and then B if pri private utilities will not be transferred to the mu mu municipality indicate how the utilities will be maintained the proposed private water lateral and sewer lateral will be maintained by the property owner no long-term fund or other measures required as these laterals are no different than other similar commercial projects criteria 9h scattered development is the project tract physically contigu contiguous to a downtown development district, village center, and new, new town center? Uh, yes. Okay. On this one, Bill, um, they said it wasn't in one of these designations before. Now they say they're contiguous to it. Okay. Does that make sense to you? There is a layer on the atlas that shows... Um, remember where what was it? Um, yeah it let's see where is that is that because it's in the town and not in the city uh, and that's why it's contiguous oh it maybe but what is different about you know the the surrounding parcels why does <laughs> why is it a growth center or a downtown area and I don't know. It's 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 it probably isn't down a downtown area for Rutland City even. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. So you could flag it. Yeah. Which number was that one? Nine uh, H scattered development. Scattered development. Okay. And I'll, I'll look up the uh, what the inconsistency was the, the other number as well. I'll find that. Okay. Um, so then criteria 9J, public utilities. A, indicate whether an excessive or uneconomic demand will be placed on supportive governmental or public utility services, such as electric services, municipal water or sewer, etc. Um, C site plan for dumpster location, public water and sanitary sewer has the capacity for this project. Green Mountain Power will supply electric. Um, criteria 9K, public investments. Um, 
list adjacent government or public utility facilities, services, and lands, uh, NA. Mm -hmm. And then criteria 9L, settlement patterns. Um, oh, yeah, and then here they say, is the project tracked physically inside a downtown development district, village center, new town center, growth center? And now they say yes. They yeah, say yes. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I think that that answer is consistent with the last one, it, with the one we're going back to scattered development. When you reread the, when you reread it, it's confusing. Nine H, but I think yeah, but it's answered correctly. Number A. But there was there one was, prior to that. Yeah, there's been three. It, it's asked this three times now, and they uh -huh. said no, yes, and yes. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Well, so that's okay. That's okay, Andy. Yeah, it's, it's it's hard to keep track of this stuff. All right. <coughs> um, Let's go to 10. Okay, so criterion 10, local and regional plans. Does the municipality have a duly adopted plan? Yes. How does the project conform to the uses and policies identified for that district? Um, should I skip over Rutland? Cities. Um, well, actually, actually, there's a mistake there. They've got the date for the city's master plan adoption oh. the same as ours. Yeah. So, huh. I'm sure it wasn't on the same night. I, 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 I'm very positive. Yeah. <laughs> they actually have an expired plan. I think mm -hmm. it was expired earlier in 2019. So, like, so that that is that's you is that ten which one is that the ten criterion ten um, item B B okay adoption um, okay so I'll read the town of Rutland part the town of Rutland adopted the town of Rutland municipal plan on October fifteenth twenty nineteen the plan's district purpose as stated is to accommodate the expanding retail and industrial sectors of the town, provides for employment opportunities in manufacturing, warehousing, research and development, and commercial uses <coughs> which specifically serve the industries or their employees in areas serviced by good transportation facilities and public utilities. The plan also identifies the following permitted uses in the project's location. Industrial and commercial uses, including light manufacturing and distribu distribution of goods and materials and all uses permitted in our districts. And then it says retail stores are permitted in Gateway Business District. Okay. What is an R district? Residential. Is this considered a residential district? Um, I think we put in almost all of our designations that there could be housing. Are there 10 plan policies that apply to the project? What are they and how does the project conform? No. Um, D, have local approvals slash permits been obtained? No. Um, what regional plan applies to the project? Uh, and then it says Town of Rutland Regional Plan, but I think they mean. Oh, yeah. Rutland Regional That's Plan. That's the wrong date. Uh, I, well, now they're talking about the regional plan. The regional plan. I think that's the right one. Wait a minute. Hold on. And Is e it correctly titled Town of Rutland Regional Plan? That's no, right it plan. should just no. be Regional Plan. The, the Rutland Regional Plan. Yeah. All right, and that was adopted June 19, 2018. I believe so. Okay. Close enough. Well, the, what, what do we do about something like this? How do we note it to them? That it's not the town of Rutland regional plan? I'll just add it in our notes to the select board and they can, they can. Oh, okay. Thank add you. it to their list. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so in what land use district as designated in the regional plan future land use map is the project located? in the industrial slash commercial district. How does the project conform to the uses and policies identified for that district? The Rutland Regional Plan calls for high density development through much of the southern half of Rutland. Future use policies associated with the district are as follows. 
development in high density areas, including downtowns, sub regional centers, and industrial slash business parks, should be concentrated to make efficient use of the region's most concentrated infrastructure. Yeah, I think we can skip the next one because we're we're not okay. familiar, that familiar with the regional plan. We'll just okay. Someone else can take a look at that. This goes yeah. to the RPC too. And then next is the municipal impact questionnaire, which the town is going to do, the select board, I mean. And then the school impact questionnaire, which I don't think applies. And that's it. Okay. So, Barbara, I did look it up and about, about the taxes you're, you're you know, saying. So, there, this is a 305 square foot project. 90,000 square feet is in the city. 214,000 square feet in the town. And their tax bill for the city is half of what ours is for 90,000 square feet. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. So we're done with Act 250 and Harbor Freight Tools. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to say that all the hard work's been done this evening, but. <laughs> Maybe we can breeze through the uh, letter from uh, regarding Otter Creek 3. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any um, off-the-cuff general comments about the letter we got back? Yes. Okay, Norm, that, that's you. I can't see your, your mouth, Norm, so I... I'm sorry. I, think that, I can't see your mouth moving, but I that's think that's your voice. All we can see is the top of your head. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just think I, I don't think the letter adequately or accurately or consistently address the points raised in the letter from, signed by Barbara and Josh. You and, think uh, it did? I'm sorry. You think it did? I did not. Okay. That's just my off the cuff. I mean, to go line by line, it's going to take a, take a while. Right. Okay. So that, that's your, your general perception. Any other perceptions? Just generally first? Barbara? Yes. On um, um, whatever reason, my screen is still showing the uh, what Bill had on the on the screen. It's not showing the. Um, I don't know, no, no. What do you, What do you want to see? Um, everyone. <laughs> oh, I, I I don't control that. <laughs> oh. Oh, whose whose email is up here? That's mine. But, okay. uh, there we go. Whatever there someone go. did. Uh, my perception is is that I think the developer has done everything they really need to do. That they're making a very, very minor change to the plan. It's almost like you're just slicing the pie up into three slices instead of two slices. I'd actually think that if they were going to change the color of the security fence, it would have more impact than the change that's being made now. So I would just, I would uh, personally feel that the, uh, this should move forward that, well, without any more review whatsoever. Okay. I agree. <laughs> you agree? I happen to agree also. Um, and I did not, uh, I, I, I tried to look at the response uh, versus the letter that we sent to them and I, there were just fuzzy differences that I found that I, I couldn't, I didn't uh, couldn't make a good case for. I, I wouldn't call them fuzzy, um, but I see where everyone is going and why you're going there. Um, th they made some arguments that were full of holes um, in, in citing sections of the town plan. Yeah, um, inaccurately. Yeah. Um, okay, let's let's go, let's keep going around the horn. Um, Dana, you do 
you have anything? Uh, my comments are similar to Andy's and Barry Beth's and perhaps even Sherman's. Hi, this is Andy McCain calling. Is Howard there? Um, uh, I don't know. My, my understanding was basically what, what they outlined in the two-page uh, response. And uh, they may be... Oh. Hey, there may be an the error meeting. in what they were. Um, uh, just, just a minute, Dana. Just a minute, Dana. Bill, I just, could muted, you? I just, I just muted him. Oh, okay, thanks. Sorry, Dana. Andy was My talking turn? over you. Oh, sorry. Um, I was saying that I, I agreed with what Mary Beth and um, Andy, and I think also Sherman uh, indicated on the. Uh, on the two-page response by Michael Malone, it seemed uh, to me uh, reasonable with respect to what we had outlined uh, previously. Personally, I don't see the uh, or the change in the uh, the uh, the size from 4.9 to two of 2.2 to be a substantive change, and I think that uh, it should fall within the original um, guidelines for the construction of the project. And I think we're being unduly restrictive by saying that it's now a new uh, a new project when in fact it's actually smaller than the original project so I, I have a difficult time with us holding the line on something that is procedural and uh for which uh if this were an, um uh a subdivision we would say that it was incidental and we would be waiving it so uh as far as i'm concerned whether they are completely accurate in their references, which I did not check. Uh, their reasoning is sound and it is in line with what uh, I have thought since the, um, the beginning. And yes, I understand that uh, we've had a, uh, a change in the town plan, but if it was acceptable previously, I don't know why we would be uh, imposing a different set of criteria or standards uh, af after the fact. Um, and you know you have to operate in good faith and any type of a negotiation requires you know uh, three components uh, procedural satisfaction substantive satisfaction or psychological uh, satisfaction and I, I, I think that I, it doesn't pass the psychological test and that's something that's required in order for any to have any type of an agreement moving forward and um, from a procedural standpoint, for us to stand on a procedure is is a bit tenuous at, at best, from my perspective. So okay. I, I would accept okay. their I would accept in the general I would accept their uh, their response. Yeah, yeah. You want to go that far? I mean, I, I can see I can see a real difference between accepting this letter, which um, all three of their points are invalid. How so? Um, and, Let's talk and, about that. But I, th that's where I, that's where I'm I not, can see a I'm difference sure. between that, Dana, and um, not not pursuing this. I mean, I, 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 the difference being, do can we really accept the letter that's full of inaccuracies? Well, point out to me where the inaccuracies are, and then maybe I can be convinced. But I mean, whether we accept the letter or whether we just don't pursue it and let them go go ahead with the project, I mean, it, it ultimately comes up to the same. It comes down to the same thing. But I mean, I don't have to necessarily okay. agree with everything that's written on the piece of paper. But. Well, I mean, if 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 the three arguments they make are all, you know, erroneous, then I, I think that is a factor. The first one. Um, they're citing our list of criteria, and they just selectively pick them. They ignore number three, and they just pick number four of our criteria. Yeah. And number three is the real important one. It says, you know, does the, the area of the development meet the definition of lands used suitable to support agriculture or forestry? And so it doesn't. So they wouldn't it get doesn't past under the new right, uh, yeah. under the new town plan. But they filed the they, they filed it originally uh, with the um, understanding that it did meet those criteria. We changed the criteria after the fact, and that that, that bothers me 
in terms of using a procedural filing with the um, PUC uh, to, to be the uh, justification for us to reject their, uh, their um, uh, rationale for building. No, no one's rejecting anything. No one's rejecting anything. The bait, I'll, I'll get to you, Andy, just a sec. Okay. Um, they, they changed the rules. And, and because of that, you know, they have a CPG that said something very specific and it didn't pan out for business reasons. It didn't pan out. So now they have to start over. So everything starts over. Um, the question for the town is how much impact is that going to have on our earlier decision vis-a-vis -vis that we've changed a number of the, of the components um, that would affect that site and, and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, Andy? I'd like to say that I feel we should get a motion on the floor and debate the motion. Okay, I don't think everyone's spoken yet, um, but oh. we'll get there, we'll get we there soon. Put a motion on the floor and then let everyone speak. What's and the I, motion? My motion would be that we accept the letter as they sent to us and that we advise the select board to allow the project to go forward without any further review. I, is that, Dana, do you feel that covers? I'll, I'll, I'll second that, yep. Okay. For the purpose of discussion. Okay. Um, uh, Jim, do you have anything? Uh, no, the only concern I have about uh, accepting something that uh, you say is an error in two or three different points is what kind of a precedent is this going to set for future uh, future deliberations? That is, excuse me, that is one of my major concerns. Um, I speak up, Norm. That is one, Jim, that is one of my major concerns, is that um, our plan was changed. It was not changed aimed at these people. Um, the, uh, without going into the, the details of the, of the letter, uh, which will take a significant amount of time, um, we now have, this is now in a view shed area and the project has not been reviewed uh, um, with that in mind. And I believe the reference to their own expert does not include a, a view set analysis because I think is, this is the old, um, he's referring to the, let me get his name. Um, Mike Busher? Busher? Yeah, uh, Mr. Busher, I believe he's referring to the old analysis that was satisfactory as I recall it. But now we have a new set of requirements. They have an entirely new um, application. It isn't simply a, a, a clerical change. I, I don't believe that's a fair accusation. And that's what I'm, I think I'm hearing from my colleagues. Um, and I think if we don't weigh it in light of the new provisions of the plan to which it must address, one, I don't think we're meeting our responsibilities, and two, I think Jim's concern is very legitimate for future uh, situations. Um, the, um, I, I did a fair amount of work on this one, on my own. I got interested, and I read the Supreme Court's decision returning um, this case to the Public Service Board, which had previously approved um, the Bennington project. And uh, then the Public Service Board wrote a 60-page opinion, which I slogged through in three settings, <laughs> sittings, um, and basically rejected all of their arguments. <clears throat> um, the two things that stand out, the projects are similar and they're not similar, but, um, but two things are very clear. One is that um, the Supreme Court 
is making, is directing the Public Service Commission, Public Utilities Commission, uh, to really look at the town plan and apply it correctly. The other thing is they took the position that the mere fact that the town made an agreement is not, is not really relevant to whether it complies with the town plan or not. And it, if you read between the lines, it really is talking about the new level of scrutiny, which is the is substantial deference as opposed to due consideration. And we will be ignoring that completely if we don't submit, subject this pro, this um, uh, project uh, to the new duly adopted, not specifically targeted at these people's uh, aspects of our town plan. So um, I, I, I think Jim is, is correct in his uh, perception and um, it's what, uh, what concerns me as well. Okay, okay, Norm. That's okay. enough. Chairman? Well, it, I, the, oh, other, oh. the other thing that I wanted to mention here is or remind people is that uh, <clears throat> this change that uh, brought about all of these other changes wasn't precipitated by the town. It was precipitated by these folks. And um, whether or not that has any credence in the thing, I don't know, but it does in my mind. Yeah, Sherman. Yeah, what, what I, I, I don't disagree with what anyone said so far, but uh, it seems to me that these people were, were operating in good faith and they didn't do anything that, I mean, they were, they were attempting to, to be above board and they've given us the information we wanted and they ran into a problem. Uh, and I would think that we could say that we could approve their going ahead with the project and indicate right up front that even though it does not adhere to our current plan, our standards, that because of the work that they've done in the past, we, we're agreeing to, uh, to make an exception in this case. And we don't have to use the word exception, but, uh -huh. but, but we don't have a th that they, that, that because of the work they've done in the, in the past, because we had agreed to it, because the change seems to have no impact, either negative or positive, uh, on the community. Uh, I would I would suggest that we go ahead and let them uh, continue with the project. Yeah, yeah. I just just remember I, I brought all this on <laughs> because I wanted to make sure that we protected our substantial deference, um, not necessarily in this case, but in future cases, and. If we didn't say anything about our, our new policies now, um, would that detract from us trying to defend our policies in the future? So that's how this started. I do have a problem accepting a letter that, that has a number of inaccuracies in it. But, but I, my, my suggestion is that we not, we not mention the letter, that, that we, that we don't use the letter as the reason for us to go forward. It's the fact that they've done the work, they've been above board, uh, the impact on the community seems to be negligible in what they're attempting to do. And as a result of that, we'll let them go forward. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> I did, I seconded Andy's just motion. Just a minute, just a minute. Uh, Dana? Yep, me? Yep, go ahead, sorry. Uh, I seconded Andy's, mo Andy's motion for the um, for the conversation uh, regarding acceptance of the letter. And as you pointed out, Barbara, there's a difference between not obstructing uh, the project from moving forward and and accepting uh, their explanation of why it's it meets the criteria. Uh, I personally, on a straw poll, I, I would probably vote no against the motion that I just seconded and vote yes to Sherman's uh, proposed idea because I think we should not obstruct it. 
that sends a different message with respect to how uh, you're characterizing the substantial deference. Because I do believe that substantial deference is important. Yeah. But I also believe, and more importantly, that when somebody is, is operating above board and has been transparent in the way that they've presented things to you and have acted in good faith, that we should reciprocate in a good faith effort to try to um, uh, allow those things that do have a benefit uh, to move forward. And I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, at the last meeting, we've been told that we've already received impact fees of $160,000. Bill, is that, did I get that right? Yes, we have. But that, that's one of the inaccuracies in the letter. It's number three. They keep mentioned they they mention the MOU there, but they are referring to all the arguments they use there in number three are referring to a, the very old site six site standards yep. um, that were in the plan. You know what, four or five years ago. So that's what they're using as proof that uh, the select board agrees with this and this and this because it's in this the sites planning standards or whatever they were so it, um, it did it did come to um my attention i reread it and uh please note it's in number one um fourth line from the bottom please note that on may 30th 2017 six months after the land use change that you, land use change had, not occurred, had, had not occurred so that i i did pick up that that was an inaccuracy because our land use map wasn't adopted in may of uh, 2017 to my recollection it was later than that we were working on it but it had not been redesignated as a um, working lands or forest lands uh, right area. plus they're referring to the mou which only mentions the town plan a couple iterations ago correct right so andy you wanted to say something or do you still what well, howard is now on the, the uh, screen there and i I don't know whether you can hear him or not. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can no. see you. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, he uh, everyone else has spoken except Howard so far. Uh, your your timing is impeccable, Howard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, do you want to join in in the conversation? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Okay, go ahead. I I like to be brought up to date as to where you are in this conversation right now. Can you quickly just give me a brief update? <laughs> We've been going at this for a couple hours, Howard. Um, <laughs> so almost two hours now. This meeting. Um, you, you got the emails, right? Yes, I got it all. I got it all. Okay, so right now we're debating a motion whether to accept the letter from ELCO and tell the select board to, um, to tell the select board the planning commission prefers to see the project go forward. I, I'm paraphrasing that badly, but the accepting the letter is the key point, I think. Well, I agree with that. I, I, I read all of that. And I agree that I think that it should go forward. I think from the, the site that's there, it's a, it's a perfect site. You know, everything that they've done, unfortunately, there's been a little bit of a mix up, I know, because they had to break some of this up. But I, I strongly feel that they've been a, a, a certainly a good tenant in what they're doing. And I think, you know, we need to look out for the town and for some of our, our people here. And I feel that I want to go ahead with it. I think we should. I think with everything okay. that they've done, it's a perfect site. You really okay. can't see it. You can't see it from much of any place. Okay. The, the, one of the questions here is also, do we accept the letter as written by Elko? And, and there are reasons why we're wrong. We're, the town is wrong. I, I agree with them. I think they spelled it out very well with – everything in detail that they went back over the, the way this whole thing played out uh, with the town and just all the steps that they had to go through. I, I truly feel that we should go along with this and, and, and support it. And I don't care what the select board thinks, but as a planning commission myself, I, 
I support it. I do. Did you read the letter, Howard? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I and what, what we've also said during this conversation is that everything, all three points they made are full of, full of inaccuracies. So, so that's why the, one of the questions here is not just supporting the project and letting it go forward, is whether we accept the letter as it was uh, sent to us. I'd be willing to modify my um, motion. motion. My motion, pardon me, to say that we're just accepting the letter. We're just accepting it as written. We're not saying it's accurate. We're not saying it's inaccurate. We're just accepting it. Where's what I feel the majority of us are now saying is we feel the project has just had a minor change made to it. Uh, certainly just, a, as I said, slicing the pie into three pieces instead of two pieces. And that's it. And let's let it. And I think everyone has spoken. Let's get down to business. Okay, so you, are you changing your motion or not? No, I'm not right now. I think it, I think the motion can stand. What I'm saying is we're accepting the letter. We're just accepting it as written. We're not saying it's accurate or inaccurate. We're just accepting the letter. And we're saying let's move, let's move along. I'm not sure. And let's, and let's everyone has spoken, so let's. A Andy, let's would you be, Andy, would you be comfortable with our saying that uh, even though we don't accept the letter and we realize and, and we recognize some inaccuracies in, in the argument, we would still like to go ahead. Um, if that's the, that... the feeling of the majority, yes, I'll, I'll certainly accept that. And or we could say that we're not we're not making any references to whether the letter is accurate or inaccurate. OK, so to move this along, you would amend your motion. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'll amend it to say that we've accepted a letter. We we've um, we are not verifying whether there are any accuracies or inaccuracies in it, and we feel that the project should be allowed to move forward without any further review. Dana, do you accept the slightly reworded motion? I need I need a second. So Howard, how did you just join us right then and there? Oh man, I'm telling you, I had to, I had to run to Clarendon, my granddaughter, and I got so mixed up tonight. I got, I just got, all of it. I just barely got home. Uh, it's just, I apologize. I truly apologize for what happened here. It's been, okay. a, it's been a crazy day. Very crazy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very bad. <laughs> so, I would. I have. I have a. I have a slight reservation, and maybe it's a wordsmithing. Um, in terms of accepting the letter, seems to imply that we, uh, we we say that it's a it's an appropriate response to the questions that were raised. Uh, I'm not hearing that there's a general consensus that that is an, a factual accuracy. So I would um, uh, ask for a friendly amendment to that, to acknowledge their letter and, and not object to the project moving forward. Yes, I agree. It's, simp that's it's simpler. I say, and I, I think you yeah. said it better for me, Dana. That well, that's fine. As long as you agree, agree that would be a friendly letter amendment. has arrived and yet, and now we're, we want the project to move forward. Um, and, and not stand in the way. And, and so we would acknowledge the letter and the planning commission has no ob objection to the project moving forward. Correct. We, yeah. We may can I be heard? Yes, Norm, you can be heard. Yeah. Um, obviously, this is going to pass. and I'm, I'm disappointed. Um, I would like for the chair to have the authority to indicate in the letter that notwithstanding the um, uh, decision of the board to recommend, uh, the decision of the commission to recommend that the project go forward, we ought to clearly say notwithstanding that, we ought to say one, because the change is minor, which that's what everybody feels, and notwithstanding, you know, or that we feel compelled to point out 
that we feel there were substantial inaccuracies in Alco's letter, uh, factual and legal inaccuracies in the letter. So that we're proceeding because the majority thinks this is a minor change. Um, and, but we feel compelled to point out to the select board that there were numerous factual and uh, legal, for lack of a better word, inaccuracies in the letter with regard uh, to the town plan. Okay, so you're not asking this to be part of the motion. You're, this is... Um, yeah. Yes. I, 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 feel, I feel what Norm is proposing should come after the vote, make it a motion, and vote that. I, I don't okay. feel we should be, we have a motion on the floor right now, we're ready for a vote. I think it should be voted on without any, without any further amendments or discussion. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so too, Andy. Uh, Sherman, are you, you uh, okay? Well, well uh, I don't know exactly what the most, I mean, I, don't, I think we just talk, we, our overall concern is wording. We all agree with what we'd like to do, I think. And we just are discussing now, it sounds like, how we say it. Okay, so, so the motion on the floor right now is that we're going to, that the Planning Commission acknowledges the letter from ALCO. Um, and that's it. And the, the Planning Commission does not object to um, the project going forward. No, the project, and the project is to go forward without further review. Without any commission. We don't recommend any further review. Uh, by the planning commission. Maybe by the planning commission or the select board. That is what they were asking us, correct? It's at least how uh, I interpret it. Well, I don't know. I thought they were just asking us to, to review the letter and, and come back with some comments on, on how it... Um, compares to the letter we sent out. So, okay, Andy, what is your motion? <laughs> it was, I repeat, it's that, the, that we, now we are going to acknowledge the letter and we are going to recommend that the project move forward without any further review. By the town? By the town, we're just, by the select board. Okay, um, did someone try to say something there? What, what does acknowledge the letter? Are there any implications in, in saying it like that? Acknowledge the letter? Norm? We acknowledge receipt, we acknowledge you sent this, and we acknowledge we have, we have the letter on file. And that we've read it. Yeah. Yes. That we've read it. Well, I think we can just say we've received the letter rather than acknowledge it. It's a little... Look, I sure. like I like receive the letter better than acknowledge it because acknowledge it to me means you know you you've given us a good argument it implies that to me JP likes to say we received it on file yeah is that okay with you uh, Andy uh, perfectly Dana still okay with you Dana uh, yeah uh, uh, the <laughs> we received it. You know, my, my choice of words for acknowledge was that we read it. <laughs> Nothing more. So if you want to say received, I don't have an objection. Okay. Okay. So let's vote on this motion. Unless anyone else has something to say. Can I rephrase it to make sure that everybody's clear on what? Yep, the yes. 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 Please. <laughs> uh, the planning commission has received the letter from Alco and recommends that the project move forward without further review. I like that. That's Andy's, I just Okay, all that. those in favor, say aye. 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 Oh, wait, 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 aye. wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. because we're, uh, because we're roll call. Roll call. The roll call, yes. So Howard? Aye. Burgess? Aye. Norm? Nay. Jim Hall? Aye. Aye. Yes. Okay, thanks. Sherman? Aye. Andy? Aye. Dana? Aye. Mary Beth? Aye. Um, and myself, uh, nay. 
Okay, so that was... We have seven, we have eight votes and only seven active members, so. Oh, that's right. So, uh, Jim, yeah, Jim, sorry, yeah, Jim, Jim. Um, we, we, you, you are an alternate now that, that Howard is back, so. Okay. Sorry. So that was five to two? Five to two, that's what I have. Okay. But thank you for your input, Jim. Okay, anything else on this? Yes. Uh, Norm? Yeah. I would like to make a motion that the uh, chair be authorized to include in her comments to the select board that uh, we have determined that we have determined to proceed uh, as outlined in the first, as the motion just passed. Uh, notwithstanding that it appears to us that there are significant uh, errors, uh, factual and legal errors uh, in the letter. Just to inform them of that. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Uh, it's it's basically to inform them that we did notice those errors. That there were, yeah. Okay, is, is there a second to that? <laughs> you know, my feeling is that you're gonna to explain to the, the board what's going on and I think, I will not second that anyway. I can't oh, second it either. Not think even you're out there alone, Howard. Well, you I know what? For the Howard. sake of discussion, I will second that. For the sake of discussion. Okay. For the sake I will of discussion. Not, I, I could not support it in the way that it's currently phrased. So let me put it that way. But I will oh. give a second so that we can discuss. Okay. Thank you. So let's go back to you, Dana, then. How would you phrase it? I think that the wording used in there in terms of significant needs to be struck. I also think that I need to hear more about what the um, legal uh, inaccuracies are. The factual ones I can see on the surface, that's easy for me to see in terms of the one I hi uh, highlighted and pointed out in paragraph one. Uh, but uh, I am not persuaded that there are legal inaccuracies and okay. I, would, I would need more uh, substantive evidence to be able to support uh, the notion of legal uh, inaccuracies. That there may be some, some factual inaccuracies or, uh, or um, misstatements, but uh, I think that the wording is too strong and it implies that we would have overturned their letter if, uh, if this is actually incorporated into a report that the chair would give to the select board. It says the wrong message. How would you, su how would you suggest it be changed? If, it, if you feel it's too strong, I, I want to hear why. Well, first of all, <laughs> I, I, I seconded it just to have the discussion and I, I, I've highlighted my concerns with that. I'd like to have other people speak before I actually I'm, make any I'm, type I'm of interested. Revision, I'm interested. I'm not I, I, like it. I think that those need to be re addressed. One, I think significance should be struck. And the, I just need an explanation on the legal part because I'm not, I don't see it. Okay, Andy. I'd just like to see it die. I wish I hadn't seconded it, but I realize why you did. But I think I, I just don't see the significance or why we should. They have the letter. Um, it certainly can go to the select board and they can review it and make their own determinations upon the accuracy or inaccuracy of, of what's going on. I think they would turn to, they would turn to us, I think, um, because we know the town plan much better than they do. Um, so I think, I think they'll just reverse that and say, well, you know, what was your conclusion? Uh, Jim, did you have something? No. Okay, You're, you, you lit up there for a second. Um, okay, I do have something. I, I, I can't support that, this motion, because I, let, let me say it another way. I have confidence that, that Barbara will explain, uh, answer any questions that the select board has as to how we got to our, came to our conclusion, and tell them what she thinks is necessary about the conversation we had. And I, Having motions to go into this much detail to me is, is really overkill.
Okay. I agree. Sorry, Nora. Trust Barbara to answer any questions and explain whether it's accurate or not. And, you know, we, uh, you know, voted on the motion to say that we, you know, think it should move forward as a body, but she can still provide whatever information the, um, my, my, needed my, without a motion. Okay. No, I'm, you know, I am um, very best appreciate that. And Dana, I appreciate your comments and Sherman as well. Uh, my concern with leaving anything out is that, hello? You're, you're fine. Yeah, you're we fine. can hear you. Okay. Because uh, I have nothing on my screen except you. Um, we see you. Small. Anyway, it, if the letter goes as, as per Andy's motion with nothing else, there's no reason for the select board to raise any questions to Barbara. And there will be no way, in my view, for her to um, explain the reservations that I think she and I uh, have about uh, the accuracy of the letter. If significant is too strong, I would just leave it to uh, legal and uh, factual errors regarding the plan. Would you, um, Norm? What? Would you be willing to take out legal? and just have factual errors. Sure. So no significant and no legal. Yeah. Okay. C can you wrap up, Norm? Well, I think that without that, there's no reason for the selectment to inquire, inquire and no reason, no basis for Barbara to raise the concerns that uh, with the letter that we have. Um, and I think they should be raised. Any further discussion? Okay, the motion on the floor is that the chair is authorized. Um, oh, back talk here. Chair is authorized um, in her comments to the select board that the the Planning Commission determined to proceed notwithstanding the factual errors contained in the letter. I don't know anything about the proceed. It's just a com uh, comment. Um, <coughs> I don't think we should qualify what we've already voted on. What, what I think are you I saying, believe Dana? with Mary Beth that um, ha having had the discussion, the chair should be empowered just to explain our process if the question should arise. But okay, Dana, I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to, to enunciate, to read the motion. Let me, let me try it since I, I made the second. Okay, and the motion Norm is. Has, excuse me? Motion is to authorize the chair to state in a letter to the select board that there are factual inaccuracies in the letter. Um, this would be in person. This would not be in a letter. So why do we even need the motion? If you can't say that, I mean. So she's authorized to speak on these points. I, is that is that your motion that this was going to be a letter, Norm? I thought it was. It was. That's I what I wrote down. Yeah. We should. I think we should vote on the motion whenever we can agree on what it is. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Norm, what was your motion? Well, I'm now concerned that I misunderstood. I thought you were going to write a letter to the select board. If you're going to attend, then I just think you should be authorized to speak to the um, factual errors in the letter. I have, I have no objection to Barbara being able to uh, express the deliberative uh, process by which these the, the Planning Commission arrived at a decision. I don't think she needs to be empowered to say that. I think that's her job as chair. I'd agree. I agree. So do I. Norm, do you want to withhold, uh, take back your motion with Rod? I did not. I'm sorry. I could not hear Dana clearly. <clears throat> I'll try and state it again. Uh, and I I can't said, see, Dana, just for your information, I can't see you on my screen. I only see a 
portion of your right side of your head. Can you hear him, Norm? Can you see me now? Norm left the meeting. Yeah, Norm just hung up. Uh oh. <laughs> Norm, just that, that's not good timing. He, he, he doesn't know how to make the icon bigger when it goes into the top right corner. <laughs> we um, work together on the um, stormwater stuff. Dana, do you want to withdraw your second? And I'll... Uh, uh, not, <clears throat> not while uh, Norm is no longer in the, in the meeting. I'd rather call the question. If he withdraws, attempts? if he, if if Norm were agreed to withdraw the um, uh, <clears throat> the motion, I would happily uh, second uh, the right. withdrawal. But okay. without him present, uh, I, I I think the question could be called, and we could get. No, I'll move the to call the question. I'm sorry, okay. Andy. Second. No. Is he trying to get on, Bill? Not yet. Okay. So, um, all those in favor of Norm's motion, say aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. I'll abstain. Do you, ha do you, have, the, do you have the vote then? Um, so, we've I got might, Howard, but... yes. Norm is absent now. Sherman, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Howard, no. Howard, no, yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> Sherman, no. Andy, no. Dana, no. Mary Beth, no. And um, the chair is abstaining. You have, you have, I think, a majority regardless of the author of the motion. Yep. Okay. Anything else on this topic? <clears throat> I, I would just like to say, Barbara, I would think that when you meet with the select board, you can certainly go over those points. I mean, you could certainly bring them up if you have a letter Hello. in your hand. And you don't need our permission to do it either. But, I don't, do I? No. <laughs> That's your job. <laughs> That's yeah. what I said. <laughs> Barbara's back. Yeah, I'm back. What happened is my well, too long to explain. Um, so I missed about three or four minutes of the conversation. Um, Barbara, can you just bring me up quickly where we are? Um, well, we you missed the vote on it. And um, did we need Jim to vote on that? One, two, uh, yes, three, you would because we wouldn't four. have had seven because you abstained. That would have only been, it was only six of us voting. But there was still a majority. Yeah, the abstinence, does the abstinence mean it doesn't, her, her vote doesn't count? I, it's still a quorum <laughs> with her abstaining. It, it's it? a quorum, right. It is a quorum. Like and four no votes. Right, right. That's, and that's, that's no all votes. It, it, it uh, doesn't Jim, matter if anyone else is present. Yeah, Jim, for the record, your vote would have been? I would have voted with the majority. Okay. Okay. So, Norm, it's, um, th that motion didn't go anywhere. Okay. But I will be bringing up um, some of the concerns um, that have been raised. As your responsibility as chair. As, yes. Um, when you say some of the concerns that have been raised, you mean the concerns with the letter? Yes. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Um, any, okay, let's, let's move on. Any announcements that any members have to bring to the group? Okay, let's go to the minutes of April 14th. Just, I, I, have a, I have a pretty good feeling that that next select board meeting is probably going to be the last one on Zoom. I bet you they're going to. Want, I bet you we're probably going to resume select board meetings the following one. So if if you guys want to discuss starting in person again at our next meeting, that may be where we're at. Okay. 
How are they so when is the next select board meeting that's going to be in person? Tuesday. No, no, oh, the one after that. The next one after that is uh, the 23rd. Okay. Right before how, your next meeting. How are they going to do the six feet distancing? I, I don't I, I, there, There's been a growing, it just sounds like they're more and more wanting to meet in person, so. Yeah. Just, just, okay. just, just a thought. Okay, thanks, Bill. Okay, the minutes just, for April 14. When's our next meeting? Oh, 20 25th. what? 25th. 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 25th, okay. So can we, may I just put this out there? <clears throat> Since we don't know how, how the meeting's going to be arranged or what the social distancing is, is going to, how it's going to be handled, can we just agree to meet again on Zoom next time and, and at that point make the decision? I don't mind. Uh, I, I think we should meet with a combination. Anyone who wants to meet at, at um, down in town hall, if it's available, can go there. And, and anyone who's still uncomfortable can, can uh, still come in by Zoom. And so hopefully um, we keep the Zoom as part of the uh, meetings, which would <laughs> definitely benefit me. And all of us, really. Um, is that possible, Bill, for someone to go into the meeting room and and be part of a, a Zoom meeting as well? Yeah, maybe, we, there's really not, I mean, my, my laptop is the only one that's got a camera on it right now in the building. So that's, <laughs> okay. that would make the interaction a little difficult because it's gonna be everybody sitting at the desks looking at this screen. That's gonna be their only option. So um, I'm not sure how that would work. I mean, we could, we could, we could try it. I, I have no idea how it's gonna work. Couldn't we patch your laptop into a monitor, a large monitor? We don't have one. Can we get one? No. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> no. Okay. Can't spend the money, yeah. so no. <laughs> um, uh, Bill. I, yep. Uh, I have a I have a portable um, uh, webcam that does a pretty good job. Um, you can you can see at my house where my wife is sitting in the background here as one of our participants. And you get a pretty good angle, so you could probably have people socially distanced and um, in. And if we need to, I could just reorient the monitor for whoever needed to be seen. Yeah, we, 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 if you want to, we could try that. Projector. We can use two, but we'd have to turn the lights down and see the projector screen. So, who in the group? Who in the group wants to um, physically attend a meeting, a future meeting? A future meeting. Who, yeah, who doesn't want to do Zoom on the 25th? Oh, let's stay, 25th, let's stay on Zoom, I think. Okay, the meeting after that. Let's just see what the... There are some things that it would be easier to do in person if you're looking at documents rather than trying to do it. In, in, although I will give Bill lots of credit for his uh, masterful... Uh, Vanna White on sharing your screen, but yep. there are certain things that are just easier to do when you're in the same space. So, yeah, we got a lot done tonight. <coughs> Absolutely. Considering. Okay, well, let's just go meeting at a time. Um, 25th will be Zoom, you know, uh, online or Zoom by phone, just like this meeting. Good. Now, let's get to the minutes. April 14th. I'll move that the minutes be accepted. Okay. Second. Second. Thanks, Dana. Thanks, Sherman. In reverse order. <laughs> I thought they were beautiful. I didn't see anything. <laughs> Jim, are you trying to say something? Oh. No. Okay. You, you lit up again. You keep lighting up, man. <laughs> <laughs> Norm? I have nothing to comment. Okay. So. Other than that they were very clear. 
All right. All those in favor of the minutes of the 14th, say aye. 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 Um, Howard, yes. Yes. Norm? Yes. Sherman? Yes. Andy? Yes. Dana? Yes. Mary Beth? Yes. Uh, yes for me and Jim, just for the fun of it? Yes. Okay. Unanimous. Anything else for the group? <clears throat> Thank you for such a long meeting tonight. We got through a lot of stuff. And um, I don't have anything else. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Enjoy the rest of your evenings.